In this video, we're going to look at the 555 timer wired in A stable mode. So as you can see, the output keeps going high and low. And when the output goes high, the red LED lights up. When the output goes low, the blue LED lights up. So one thing to notice is the output is not quite making to 4 volts. The uh, power supply is 5 volts right there. So it doesn't output all the way to the uh, positive voltage. But it does a pretty good job going all the way to the uh, negative voltage, which is ground, the negative side of the power supply. Now we are measuring the capacitor voltage. You can see that jumper there going to the capacitor and where it connects to these uh, other components. And you can see here that, again, we got the 5 volt power supply. The capacitor is charging to two thirds of the supply voltage while the output is high, it's uh, charging. And while it is discharging, the output is low right there. So uh, to take these measurements, by the way, we got the cable coming out of my uh, pocket oscilloscope here. And uh, they're low priced, they're pretty nice in my opinion. And they have alligator clips. I just clip them to uh, jumper wires so that I can quickly move them around the board. And finally, we're gonna take a measurement of the uh, discharge pin. So as you can see here, the uh, voltages we're getting are in relationship to ground right there. So this is the uh, voltage difference that we see on there in relationship to the uh, blue jumper, the black alligator clip. But in any case, the uh, discharge pin, when the capacitor is discharging, the discharge pin connects directly to ground. And then uh, it stops connecting to ground to charge the capacitor so you get a sudden uh, jump in voltage because we have a resistor and a diode there to uh, charge the capacitor. And as the capacitor charges, it voltage builds up and thus the voltage at the discharge pin uh, builds up until it connects to ground to start discharging the capacitor again. So here is the schematic I put together of the circuit, the value components that I'm using right there, and the uh, scope locations, where we took the measurement. Remember, the voltage at uh, the uh, red alligator clip, the red jumper, was always in relationship to ground, zero volts right there, so more positive or more negative. Here is the pin layout for the dual inline package 555 that we were using. If you see these dual inline package, Integrated circuits, that's how they number it. You got the little indents at the top, and uh, you start at the left, going counterclockwise, you number it. So one, two, three, four, then you jump across five, six, seven, eight. That's the name of the pins right there. So we're using an NE555. If you're using a micro A555, should work exactly the same. There's other versions out there that are much rarer, and uh, so they may have uh, special properties that make it. So it doesn't work in the same circuits, but uh, in any case, Probably any 555 will work for this particular circuit. Now, we have this in A stable mode. So what sets the output high and low is the voltage at a pin two and pin six. So to begin with, let's say the capacitor is discharged. We apply power. The capacitor charges. So the current has to go through that resistor and then it's easier to go through the diode than that resistor. So it's gonna go and uh, around and uh, charge the capacitor. Once it gets to two thirds of the supply voltage, pin six will see that. Then pin seven connects to ground, as we saw earlier, and that discharges the capacitor through the resistor there because it cannot go through the diode. It's reverse bias at that point. So in any case, it discharges until pin two sees one third of the supply voltage. Once that happens, then pin seven stops discharging and the capacitor uh, starts charging again. Current goes through the resistor and the diode. So the value of the capacitor, the larger it is, the more charge it will have. And uh, the value of the resistors, the more resistance they have, the longer it takes uh, current to flow through them. They resist current more. You will have a longer period of time. Lower values will go uh, quicker. And of course, you can balance them out so that uh, you get whatever time you want. So now we also looked at the voltage of the output. When the capacitor was charging, it was gaining in voltage, so a positive supply was headed to the capacitor. The positive supply was also going to the output. Now it fell at least a volt short, as we saw, which is typical with uh, the 555 timers. They don't usually make it to the positive supply all the way. They typically fall about a volt short or so. So I have a red LED to light up when the output is high. Forgot to color that red, but in any case, 
that's where I had the red one. It has a lower value resistor than the blue LED because the uh, blue LEDs are naturally brighter. So we want more current to go through the red LED so that it gets close to the same brightness as the blue one. But in any case, capacitor charging, output is high right there. Once the capacitor starts discharging, as we said before, pin 7 goes to ground. And by the way, any current getting through that resistor will also go directly to ground. So it doesn't influence the uh, discharge time of the capacitor. That's when uh, pin 3 is connected to ground. As we saw, it makes 0 volts pretty well. And that is when the blue LED lights up. So again, when the capacitor is charging, voltage is going up, the output is high. When the capacitor is discharging, the output is low. So it's uh, connected to ground uh, pretty directly. Now we have pin 4 here. That is the reset pin. We don't want it to do anything. If you give it a low input, uh, close to ground, I think less than half the supply voltage, it's going to hold the output low. It's going to be stuck there. So we don't want it to do anything. We put it directly to the positive supply. So here we are on the board. We can see pretty, uh, things pretty good right now. There's the positive supply, pin 8, and then ground, the uh, negative supply, pin 1 right there. Pin number 2, the trigger pin, and pin number 6, the threshold pin, look at the same voltage. We got a little jumper to uh, make a direct connection so they'll have the same voltage. As I said before, pin 4, the reset pin, we don't want it to do anything. We put it to the positive supply. So at the output on the schematic, I know the LEDs were at the output, but we got the resistors there. It doesn't matter the order as long as the LEDs are in the right way. So we got the positive supply up there. That's where we want the longer lead, the anode, to head the shorter lead, the cathode, heads towards more negative when it lights up. So that's going to head to uh, pin 3, the output pin. 1000 ohm resistor, 220 ohm resistor there. Output coming to the long lead, short lead uh, down one row. So I have a little capacitor right here. I didn't put it on the schematic. Sometimes you will see a uh, schematic. This is about half of a microfarad, 0.47. But in uh, any case, this is helping to keep the supply voltage a bit more stable. So usually you'd see that directly across the supply pins of the 555. But it should uh, work over there. So this circuit was working pretty good without it, but it's a good idea to have that. So I thought I would put that in there. So in any case, to uh, charge the capacitor, we got a 10,000 ohm resistor right there. Again, you can change the values based on the uh, speed. You want it to change the output. So that's going to the discharge pin, which sometimes connected to ground, and sometimes it isn't. So when it isn't, the capacitor can charge. We have a rectifier diode here. So just like the LEDs, you have to put it in the right way. There's a gray band there. That means that when that side's more positive and that side's more negative, it will conduct. And uh, then we're going to grab our 100 microfarad capacitor right here. And it can be uh, charged up to 50 volts right there. As more current goes into it, over time, its voltage rises. So it is polarized. We want the short lead with the uh, gray dash over here to the uh, negative supply right there. That makes sure that's always more negative than that one, or equal. And uh, so when the uh, power supply is on. Now we got the resistor to discharge it. Remember, current cannot go through the diode that way. So when the discharge pin connects to ground, now it has to go through this resistor. So we have close to the same... Uh, resistance charging it as discharging it having to go through the diode drops the current a bit and so it takes a little bit longer to charge than discharge but it's a uh, relatively close to uh, equal so if we uh, just charge through two resistors it would take about twice as long to charge as to uh, discharge and uh, so you can adjust the timing a bit that way now we should be all set and I got the power supply off let's turn the uh, power on and we should see the LEDs flashing really nicely, which is a cool effect in electronics. So, in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I am posting to the screen. And uh, check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I would appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.